There is either a brilliance or a madness to this book, and I'm not 100% sure which it is. Hey everyone, today I want to talk about City of Last Chances by Adrian Tchaikovsky. The basic plot of this book is you have a city that's on the verge of a revolution, and it's just waiting for that right spark to kick things off that just really ignites everyone and sets everything else in motion. But this book is about so much more than the plot. To be quite honest, the plot is really a secondary part of this book with the major part of it being just describing the city. Now in the book, he compares the city to a mosaic piece of art. Now I want you to picture what a mosaic art piece looks like and if it helps, I'll put in mosaic piece of art on the screen. And what he does is he describes each little piece of the city, kind of like describing each little piece of a mosaic art piece, where on their own, they're not all that significant, but each one being its own unique color, shape, size, and fitting together to make this masterful piece of art, that's what he's doing in this book. He's describing each little section of the city that is its own shape, style, color, size, and then how they connect to the other little pieces that, again, on their own, are fairly insignificant. But when you put them together, it just makes this beautiful picture, this beautiful city, this beautiful book. And while reading this, I kept picturing a scene from A Beautiful Mind where he is making connections in all these newspapers and magazines and you can't really tell at that point is he mad or is he brilliant that's the feeling i got while i was reading this is adrian tchaikovsky mad writing like this or is he absolutely brilliant i'm gonna lean towards the brilliant side because of how phenomenal the pros of this book are i am by no means a pro snob I like my prose to be simple and straightforward, kind of like Sanderson or Michael J. Sullivan. I don't need anything flowery or anything like that. But the prose in this book are so good, they just jump off the page. They are absolutely phenomenal. Some of the best I've ever read. And because of that, like I said, I have to lean towards this book is absolutely brilliant and just beyond my capability of understanding everything that went into making this book, at least not on one read, which I do want to mention, I listened to the audiobook. Now the narrator was fine. In fact, he was actually pretty good. But this book is so different from everything else you've read. It's so hard to follow along and piece all these together. Again, look at this piece of art and try to describe the art by describing each individual piece it's not easy to follow along with. So for that reason, I do recommend if you pick this book up, go with a physical read. I'm definitely gonna be rereading it, and when I do, it will be physical this time. I'm not gonna try to do another round of audio on this. I wanna fully understand everything there is that's going on in this book, and for me to do that, it's definitely gonna to have to be a physical read. So now that I've kind of talked about the brilliance or the madness of this book, what is the book even about? So on the surface level, the plot is this city is on the edge of revolution. There's been a few different leaders in its history, and the current one is a committee that believes they know what is perfect. And their task is to make everything perfect. Make the people perfect, make the city perfect, make the world perfect. And once they accomplish that, then they'll step down from their role as being in charge. Obviously, that's never going to happen. But in their minds, perfect city means there's the right way and everything else is wrong. So there's no room for art. There's no room for religion. There's no room for debate. It is their way or the wrong way. And wrong is not acceptable in the land of the perfect. So naturally there's people that want to revolt against this. But everyone has their own idea of what the city should be. They want to be in charge when everything is said and done. So you're waiting for the spark to ignite 
the revolution. But once that flame takes off, you can't really control it. So everyone's hesitant to fan the flames of rebellion because they want to make sure they're in charge. And how do you know once you start burning down everything that you're not going to get burnt down with it? From a plot perspective, that's really what's going on. But again, the story really isn't all that much about the plot. It is about the city. And the city is kind of a character in itself. Every review I've seen has mentioned that the city is its own character. I'm going to be talking about the actual characters. There are some that I really liked, really enjoyed their story once I figured out who they were and what they were and how they related to everything. There's others that I really hated. They were horrible people. I definitely did not want them to be one of the successful people if this revolution ever happened. And then there's some people that I didn't care for and some people that by the time I finished the book, I have no idea who they were, who they are, how they related to everything, no idea why they were included in the story at all. And reasons like that are why I need to do a rereading of the book. So overall, I give it four stars, but that's a placeholder rating. That's me saying I know this book is brilliant, but I can't understand it. And without fully understanding everything that goes into this brilliance, I can't give it a five star rating. Like I said, I'm going to be doing a reread. This is a book I think everyone should read because it is so unique. There is nothing I've read that even comes close to this. You could tell me every book you've read and what you've rated them, and I still wouldn't know whether this is going to be a book you like or not. Because of that uniqueness, I think everyone should give it a try. I don't think everyone's going to like it. I think some people are absolutely going to hate it. Some people are going to love it. Some people are going to be in a spot where I'm at, where you see the brilliance, but you can't fully understand it. And then there's going to be some people that are like, I just don't get it. But until you pick it up, I don't know which bucket you're likely to fall into. Because nothing you've read before is going to prepare you for what this book is like. I don't care if you're character-driven, plot-driven, you love prose, you hate prose, you love world-building, you hate world-building. None of that matters when it comes to this book. It is just so much different than everything else. So I really hope you do pick it up and at least give it a chance. Feel free to DNF if it's not working for you. But I promise you it will be a unique experience while you are reading it. So that's my review. I feel like it was a little all over the place, but the book kind of reads all over the place as well. So I guess that's kind of fitting. So let me know in the comments if you've read this book. What did you think of it? What am I missing? What would you add to this review? And until next time, bye.